All right, guys, so we are going to be doing a creamy, cheesy tuna casserole today. And these are all the ingredients I'm going to put them below. So remember, I always try to put everything below. And what I'll do is I'll go over everything with you guys. And I'm going to voice over the video, which is going to make it easier so that it's not a long, drawn out video. All of these ingredients will be below. All right, so let's get started. Just wanted to come back really quick before I start the voiceover. These are broccoli florets. My pa my parents, my children really don't like peas, so I usually use broccoli, corn. If I did use peas, it would be very minimal peas. So we're gonna be using broccoli in this. So yeah, that's the difference in mine. And because I had two cans of cream of chicken, no, we do not eat chicken and stuff, but that's not gonna kill us. And I don't want to waste it because it's already been um, in my cabinet, which is something I usually keep on hand. So yeah, all of the stuff, like I said, will be in the description box below. So we're going to get started on making this tuna casserole. You want to start off by boiling your water. And I have some Himalayan salt and I want to put salt on that. Now, when I'm making a pasta that is going to be... Um, putting sauce or cheese or something on it I don't usually put olive oil because olive oil really just helps the pasta not to stick and it also helps the sauce not to stick to the pasta as well so that's not really a good idea when you're doing like macaroni and cheese and stuff like that so yeah this is on a medium heat and I'm gonna let that come to a rumble and boil all right, now waiting for your water to boil, you can chop up your onions and your mushrooms. I got Baby Bella mushrooms and a regular sweet white onion. Next, it is time to get your saucepan ready. I have a medium heat. And to this pan, I'm going to be adding some olive oil. We're gonna let that get hot and move on to the next step. Now it's time to cook the mushrooms and the onions and the oil and cook them till they get translucent. Now I'm gonna chop up my broccoli. Now I recommend that you chop yours up or either try to cook it just a little bit. Now I would have put this in a pan with the onions and the mushrooms. I don't know why I didn't, but um, I should have because it was frozen. But that's how you want your onions to look, just like that, nice and translucent. Now it's time to drain your cans of tuna. You don't wanna drain them completely dry. Drain them just enough where there's just a little bit of juice still in the can to give the pasta and the casserole that tuna fish taste. So you're going to add those into a bowl. Now that the tuna is drained and in the bowl, it's time to add the cream of chicken soup, both cans, into the bowl as well. Now it is time to add your onions and mushrooms to the bowl as well. And now it is time to also add your egg noodles to your boiling water. Okay, you want to take that broccoli and add that into the bowl. And now you want to mix, mix, mix. This is very important. I am adding Parmesan cheese into the mix, garlic into the mix, parsley into the mix, onion powder, thyme, black pepper. All of that was put into the mix. And now the noodles are ready. You do not want the noodles to be really soft. You want them to be kind of firm al dente because they will cook in the oven as well. Being that I didn't want it to be super wet, I added the heavy whipping cream in the beginning and I added the rest at the end. And now I'm adding my cheddar into the mix and whipping that all together. You wanna make sure everything is incorporated nice and well. The noodles is done and I'm going to drain them. You do not want to cook these all the way because they're gonna cook more inside the oven. So it's time to drain them. Next, it is time to oil your pan. I'm using an olive oil spray from Aldi's. You can use the spray of your choice or you can use the oil of your choice. All right now, guys, it is time to use that drain pasta by putting it in your mixture and mixing it very well. Guys, this is a very simple recipe. It is basically mixing everything together and getting it in that casserole dish. Guys, I tell you, when editing, it is ridiculous. So yeah, I usually put about a cup of mayo in here to make it extra creamy. And I forgot to put that on the side. It was not in the picture in the beginning. But yeah, that also is going to be a part of this. But it will be at the bottom. So don't worry. All of this will be in the description box. All right, guys, it is time to put it in the casserole dish. So I'm just going to take all this mixture and like ladle it down in the, you hear me, ladle it. 
just get it in the pan okay just get it in the pan and i'm going to just kind of make it like flat a nice surface to put my breadcrumbs on now it is time to take my butter i'm going to take about three tablespoons of butter and we're going to get that melted into the microwave and once we do that we're going to add that to well at least add the breadcrumbs to it now these are the breadcrumbs that i create on my own by letting the ends of the bread which nobody likes to eat set on the side i'm adding a fourth of a cup of parmesan cheese to this and i'm going to be adding some parsley to this as well and you just want to mix this up really good now i use these breadcrumbs for lots of things if your family does not like the actual ends of the bread like mine doesn't just set them out and let them dry out put them in a food processor and make your own breadcrumbs so see i am smashing this down and kind of smearing it you know to make it nice and smooth for the breadcrumbs you want to set your oven to 350 okay now it is time to spoon on your breadcrumbs and then the next step after doing that guys is what putting her in the oven let's go all right so now that you've done that get you some aluminum foil i am going to try not to use this as much but long as it's not touching your food i believe that it's a little bit safer um and i don't have a top to this so you want to keep the moisture in by putting some sort of top or something on on it to keep the moisture in that way the cheese and everything can melt properly so into the oven it goes all right guys the 40 minutes are up so let's get her out of the oven all right guys let's reveal her she is bubbling oh my gosh she is bubbling guys this is one amazing one pot dish i'm telling you you guys and your family will love this dish so let's move on guys i just wanted to come back real quick and show y'all um that this is on a cooling rack instead of just placing it on my counter i know this is granite but depending on what it is sometimes i like to be <laughs> safe and put on top of a cooling rack so the air can circulate around it and allow it to cool faster before i dig into it i had to get close to these breadcrumbs look at the crispy tasty buttery parmesan breadcrumbs on top of this bad boy look guys i am not about to speed this up i want y'all to get all of it take it in do y'all see the cheesy creamy goodness of this tuna casserole do y'all see this at this time i'm also recording a video for instagram so my daughter's on one side trying to get a good shot so i can tease those on instagram to come over and watch this recipe for this tuna casserole but i also wanted to show you guys how it looks when i dig in as well oh my gosh you guys gotta let me know how your family loves it because this is amazing okay this right here is amazing now don't be acting like that you know you want to taste this you know you want to taste it but you can't but what you can do is make it and let me know how it turned out below okay share it and i will see you guys later gators